morning, everyone. This is Miss Mariah, and this is Art Education at the Allen County Public Library. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's beautiful outside. I feel all that spring energy going on. <laughs> I hope that wherever you are, you are well, and that you are creating something awesome. This month, we are talking about photography. This is something that we have never covered in art education before. Typically, it's always been around paintings or drawings. So I thought, you know, I, I'm really starting to enjoy photography myself. I know a few of you guys like to, to get out and, and take some wildlife and steal photographs. So here we are. I thought, well, we'll cover it a little bit. I don't know a whole lot about it as far as like the technology behind it. So I've got some cheat sheets. Don't worry, we, I got you covered. But it's not, it, I've always been kind of intimidated by photography and I've since learned like, you don't have to be intimidated by it. It is, especially now that we have our cell phones, it is so much easier and it's actually very, um, therapeutic for me. Some of you know that I like to take photographs of abandoned um, old houses, cars, barns, things of that nature. I like taking photographs of nature. Like I like to get right up in there and look inside that flower and <laughs> take a picture of it. Um, so we're just going to cover a few things and I'm going to show you some photographs. Of course, they'll be on you know, at the end of this video, like I do with all my other photographs. But we're just gonna, you know, you know, just touch the bases of some stuff. And and I know a lot of you, like your grandma had like the Canon. Y'all remember the Canon, big, huge camera? Or the, the cameras with the, now I'm showing how old I am. The cameras with the, the big flash cubes on them. Okay, so you don't have to have those in order to take a high quality, beautiful photograph. You can do it with your phone, okay? You can do it with your phone. There's so many, um, sometimes I'll use filters, like I'll, I, I really like vibrant and uh, saturated, the, those, those options in there. Because what I do with the saturation is I just pull the greens of the grass and the blue of the sky. But I'm, I, I try not to do it in a way that it's overwhelming and takes away from the actual subject of the photograph, okay? So get out there with your cell phone and, and start taking some pictures and go into the edit options and you will find just this whole world open up to you. And it is really amazing. Okay, so, so we're gonna jump right in. The, the pictures that you'll be taking with your cell phone are considered digital, which means there's no film to develop and that everything that you're gonna do to edit it can be done either on your phone or if you have a digital camera, there are programs that you can put on your computer at home and you know plug your phone up to your computer, download those photographs, and there's programs that you can edit from there. So. That means you can take a horrible picture of yourself and be like, nobody's gonna see that, delete. Or you, you know, you take four or five pictures of this flower and you can go through and be like, okay, I want this one and this one, but the others I can delete and you can delete them. Where old school, like 35 millimeter, you know, you get the roll, you send it off, it comes back and whatever picture you took, it's gonna be on there. Whether it's a blurry picture, a horrible picture, or just something that you wish that you could have just deleted because you really didn't like. So digital is really, I mean, for the new photographer, it's the way to go. I know that there's a lot of photographers out there that still enjoy the, uh, I, I, you know, just the old fashioned way of doing things. And that is great. I, I have a couple of friends that are into photography and, and they like the film. They, you know, you know, to each their own. It's it's just like painting, it's just like drawing. It's, it's whatever you're into, okay? So, 
So you got your simple point and shoot cameras and they automatically focus and they, they adjust the exposure so you don't get like the red eyes or uh, like a really white skin, that kind of thing. And you know, it, it comes with the right lens. It does pretty much everything on its own. But sometimes you do have some problems because they, you know, they are inexpensive cameras. Uh, sometimes you might not be able to get exactly as zoomed in or as much detail in a photograph as you want. Uh, but they're inexpensive cameras. They can fit in your pocket. I mean, they're, and, and if you decide like you don't want to use your phone, but you want to do like little, you know, digital shots, it's, it's probably the camera for you. Uh, the more advanced point and shoot, uh, they are similar to the other ones, but they have a lot more special, special features like high resolution, um, really the, the capability to really zoom in on something and it pick up exactly what you want. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so, and just always remember, cause there, there are gonna be hardcore film people out there that'll be like, oh, well that's not really photographs. I, you know, and I actually heard someone say that to someone else one time and they were like, well, if you don't develop film, it's not photography. It was really hard for me not to say something because I, I personally have taken some really amazing photographs and I know other people who take amazing photographs and, and enter their photographs into art shows and, you know, in photography and win. So don't, don't let anybody do that to you. No. Uh, one of the most common mistakes you'll make is shaking. So just be sure, like when you're taking your photograph, I tend to hold my breath. So when I get ready to take a photograph, I hold my breath and I get very still, take the photograph and then, you know, I can breathe and, and not pass out. <laughs> uh, overexposure, so you need to, to watch your lighting. Uh, most of the point shoot cameras do help take care of that, but still, I mean, just be mindful of your lighting. Um, try taking test photographs. Oh, there goes our lights. Um, you know, because you can always delete them, you know, take a few photographs, you know, and that's like when you get a group of friends all together and they're just like, okay, take more than one. And you take like 20 right back to back and then she has to delete them all later. <laughs> uh, don't hand me your camera. Uh, let's see. So composition, there's a very basic rule of composition. It's known as the rule of th uh, thirds or the tic-tac-toe rule. Uh, imagine your viewfinder, which your viewfinder is what, basically it's finding the view. It, it's what you look through. Um, it's divided into nine equal size squares, like a tic-tac-toe or tic-tac-toe grid. Uh, it, Compose your picture with your subject in the center position. Okay, so I know that's kind of difficult, but, and I've got these websites. I'll have all the links. Um, at one of the four intersecting points, this should help you uh, make it look more aesthetically good. Does that make sense? You know, you want to, now me, personally, I like things off-centered and a little wonky, but you know what looks good. You know what other people are going to look at and be like, oh, you know, that's pleasing. Uh, don't be, and, and this is one thing that I always, and there, my daughter has a photograph of me laying on the ground in an old cemetery taking a photograph. Don't be afraid to change your viewpoint. Get on the ground and, and, and come up under your subject. Get over the top of your subject. Lean to the side, you know. Don't just stand there, okay, right in front of me. Get down, 
where, you know, if you're like, oh, I'm gonna go out and take some wildlife photographs, wear some old clothes so that you can get down on the ground and you can get eye level with that, that toadstool or that flower and really find those hidden details that most people will never see if you don't have it in your photograph. So, so get down and dirty and, and climb and just, just make sure that you don't break your leg. Uh, so digital cameras, you can um, actually, like I said before, you can transfer those digital images. So if your computer has a uh, program on it for editing and downloads, you can transfer from your camera or your phone to that computer. So that's called, di you know, transferring digital images. Okay. So, so now we, we've, we've talked a little bit about that. What is photography? Okay. What is it? It's pictures, right? Pictures you take with a camera. Photography is the art of capturing light with a camera usually via a digital sensor or film to create an image. With the light, with the right camera equipment, you can even photograph wavelengths of light invisible to the human eye. Now, how cool is that? I wanna learn how to do that. <laughs> the first photograph was captured in 1826 in France, and I've seen this one, and it's, it's actually in, um, a couple of the websites that I'm going to give to you. And it shows a roof of a building lit by the sun out of someone's window. It, it's kind of weird looking. It looks really overexposed. But when you realize it's the very first photograph ever taken, 1826, yeah, it looks pretty good. So the color photography, uh, it started to become popular. Um, and it was developed by a man uh, known or named Eastman Kodak, Kodak film, right? Uh, the uh, Kodachrome film was developed in 1930. And, and you're like, what? Most pictures, because that film was expensive. So people were still using the black and white film because, you know, it was new and colored photography was rather expensive. So it took chemists, it, you know, all these amazing artists to come together to develop this film and color photography. So that's something to look into. It's, it's a pretty interesting um, time in history when we, we started adding color. And it wasn't those weird, you'll see like the old photographs that they added color to and it's like a, a wash, like almost like watercolor. Yeah, no. Uh, what camera do you need for photography? Okay, so we've already discussed that. Any camera that you take pictures with is considered photography. Um, it's just your experience level and your, your talent and your um, programs and things like that that make it above or below par, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, Apple, of course, was the first, uh, the world's first trillion dollar company that, you know, started developing, you know, cameras that have this capability of taking really nice photographs. Yay, Apple. Sorry, Android people. We, we got there first. Um, phones. Phones are better than like the dedicated cameras for most people's needs. So let's say you're out and about with your friends or family and one of your friends, you know, like let's say you're at the mall and she's standing a certain way and you're like, oh my gosh, if I had a camera, that would be a beautiful photograph. Okay, you got one on your phone. So a dedicated camera would be your your Canon or, or whatever, your Kodak. So you gotta pull it out of the bag and she's over going, what is she doing? And you're trying to get the lens on and all that. With your phone, you just take it out and take the picture, right? So it, it, it's better suited for just like on demand needs. 
that's that's the way I am. Like I'll just be out somewhere and I'm like, man, that's a that's a neat, you know, old bird's nest in that bush. I'm gonna take a picture of it. Uh, let's see. If you buy a dedicated camera rather than using your phone, uh, you'll need to you know make sure you have the interchangeable lenses so that you can try out different types of photography. Uh, read the reviews. Don't just buy a camera. You need to read the reviews because there, there's people there that want to help you and they're going to say, you know, if you're into wildlife, this isn't the camera for you, but, you know, and then other people like, okay, this camera over here, however, if you are into wildlife, things that might be moving, this is the camera. So always read the reviews. Um, and don't obsess over the bad reviews, okay? Because you can't make everybody happy 100% of the time. So just just be mindful when you're reading the reviews that some people just like to complain. But if if they're telling, if, if three or four people are like, ah, I, I tried to take wildlife photographs with this one and they're just blurry, then, then listen to that. Uh, and find you a nice deal. Remember, don't ever pay, pay full price. Always find you a nice deal. <laughs> and that's in everything. <laughs> uh, so you have to, and also uh, shutter speed is something that you need to, to look out for. So if you're actually photographing things moving, you want to make sure that your shutter will open and close fast enough to catch the movement. So always just, you know, know, know your subject and know what you're going to need to take its photograph. Uh, the purpose of photography, the purpose can vary depending on what the photographer is trying to, to achieve. Documentary and news photographers, they catch images for a purpose, for providing detailed accounts of an event. Okay, so we, we've, we've all seen those photographs. While a hobbyist, which is myself, it's just, it's just a hobby. Um, they capture life moments with their friends and family. So, so hobbyists and, and you know, you, you got your documentary and, and your professionals. You got right here in Allen County. I mean, how many people do we have that do professional photographs of families and prom, yeah, all of that, right? Uh, there's different kinds of photography landscape, micro, light, uh, wildlife, portrait, documentary, fashion, travel, event photographs, like your wedding photographers. Um, there's just, the list goes on. Let's see, and it talks about the kind of equipment, because like I'm, I'm going from about five different websites on this. Genre is the type of photograph such as landscape, portrait, wildlife. Uh, what makes a great photograph? A great photograph should have good lighting, subject, and uh, com let's see, composure. Okay, so the three elements that come together to make photography. You need a strong vision, and you need to express it in a way that will get people to look at it. Okay, so um, for me, you know, I keep going back to me because I'm, I know me. I, when I take photographs of my abandoned houses and barns, there's something about wood rot, uh, bark on trees, old rusted nails. Those are things that, to me, make me stop for a second. I love mushrooms. I love taking photographs of mushrooms. And I like to get up close. I want my subject right here. And, and a lot of times it's to the side so that you can see the background, but the background is not in focus. All your detail you're seeing is right up here. So that's, that's how I photograph. Uh, that's why I don't think I'd be very good at, you know, like portrait photography. Because I'll, I'll be wanting to, to focus in on some flaw. People don't want that. So here's a famous photograph. And I'll tell you something funny about this photograph. Um, it's called The Immigrant Mother. 
So a lot of you guys have seen this, uh, especially in your history books and documentaries about the Dust Bowl. It's a mother who is living during the depression and uh, Dorothy Lane took it. So here is this mother and here's her two children. And you just, you just see, and this woman is probably not even out of her twenties. And you could just see the hard life that this woman is, has lived. But here's something about this photograph. I've looked at this photograph. I've seen this photograph my entire life. And we've actually got a poster size uh, version of this photograph here in the library. I was looking one day and someone, I can't even remember who it was, they were like, do you see the baby? She has a little baby in her arms. I never saw that baby until that day. I, I was concentrating so much on her and the details in her face. I never saw the baby. So, yeah, it, it was, it was like one of those things like, wow, where have I been? And I need to look at the whole picture. Uh, this is another one. These are just famous photographs and this is actually in black and white. It's just a very lovely mountain scene and the Snake River. And again, I'm going to put all these online. So, uh, I remember being a teenager and seeing this photograph and what is so sad is a couple of years after the photographer that took this, uh, Kevin Carter, he took his own life. Actually, it was a year later. And it was when, you know, the world started really taking notice that there were children in Africa who were just basically laying down and dying and this vulture is waiting for this little baby to die. So, um, he took this photograph and it haunted him so much that he ended up taking his own life. Yeah. Uh, so Salvador Dali, which is a, a surrealist painter. We all, we've talked about him before. This is a photograph taken. Here he is and he's in it. I don't know what's going on with these cats. He's up off the ground. There's water. Again, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I'll post this at the end of the video. But it's just a very interesting, a lot going on. It's a surreal type photograph. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it was quite interesting. It's kind of bringing in our, our painters also. So here's another more famous one. And it was uh, J, uh, JV Day in Times Square. Most of you already probably are like, yeah, 1945, the end of the war. Everybody's celebrating, and this young sailor grabs this young nurse and just plants one on her. And years later, they, of course, you know, the photographer took their names, and, you know, and of course, they, after that day, <laughs> you know, this was just a happy sailor and a happy nurse. They kissed, and it was just caught on, you know, film. Uh, 1908, the uh, Cotton Mill Girl. And photography, like we were talking with the documentary and the news photographers, catch a photograph that tells a story that needs to be told. And this is about child labor in the cotton mills. And this little girl who, her story is more, t you know, it's told more in detail, but she's, I think they said she's like eight or nine years old. And she's working in a cotton mill. And this photographer went in and, and wanted to make people aware that, you know, instead of these children being in school and being educated, they were working. But her family probably needed the help. They needed the money. Uh, one of my favorite people, Gandhi. This is a photograph of him with his uh, spinning wheel. I just like Gandhi, so I wanted to, you know, show this one. And... The last one, and I'm gonna warn you, it's it's of a young lady who is dead. So if you don't wanna look, I'll put it at the very end. If you don't wanna look at it, you don't have to. Um, Andy Warhol named this photograph the most beautiful suicide. And what happened was, 
uh, May 1st, 1947, Evelyn McHale leapt from, uh, left to her death from the observation desk at, at our deck on the Empire State Building. The Empire State Building didn't always have the big wrought iron gate or fence. So you could literally <laughs> look over. Mm -mm, no, not me. So people on occasion did jump from the Empire State Building. And so this young lady, early 20s, took her own life. Just so happened a photography student, Robert Wells, was just walking down the street. Like he was just walking down in front of the Empire State Building across the street, heard this, th this loud boom sound and looks, you know, he looked over and there is Evelyn, laying, she landed on top of a car. He, he never, like he, he didn't, he said he really had no reason. It's just there was, when he walked up to her, she looked like she could be alive. But the way that her body was laid out, she, he was like, I had to take the photograph. And it's become one of the most famous photographs in the world just simply because of the subject of it. It, it is aesthetically a very beautiful photograph, but it's also a very sad photograph. So I'm gonna show it now. So if you don't wanna see it, just turn away. Um, it's, it was, uh, he called it Fallen Body. Andy Warhol renamed it the most beautiful suicide. And there's nothing graphic, I, I promise you. But she's just laying there and she's in, and she has her little white gloves on and she's clutching her pearls. So photography, it could be taking pictures of a very happy child with balloons at the zoo, or it could be a young lady, you know, her life over. It could be a child dying in Africa. It could be a child just born laying on its mother's chest. It could be flowers. It could be an old building. It could be a homeless man begging for food. Photography to me sometimes is more intimate than painting. Because with painting, you know, you get in your mind and you pull stuff out or you might recreate something that someone else did. There's just something real about photography. It is a real image and it's an image for whatever reason that photographer looked at and said, I find this amazing, beautiful, interesting, and I wanna share it with the world. So, you know, if you've ever thought about going into photography, just start with your phone. All phones now, I mean, all smartphones now have cameras. Go out, take some pictures, and, and just see, and play with the filters, play with the programs, and I mean, Enter in, enter them into art shows. See, see what you can throw out there, and and I'm, I'm promise you, you'll be amazed at the amount of people that give you feedback. I, some of my photographs, I've gotten more love from my photographs than my paintings, actually, and. I just, you know, I, I'm one of those photographers that I see something that maybe other people are just like, mm, but there's something beautiful about it. So just keep that in mind. But like I said, uh, I'll have those links at the end of the video and, and uh, all these photographs and the photographer. And sometimes there's even like captions below it in fact, I think most of them have a caption, maybe about the photographer or the subject or just a quote from the photographer. There's a couple of those and they're really good. Uh, so 
thank you for joining me again. And April, what do we need to talk about in April? <laughs> I don't know, but we will maybe it's a subject that I'm not familiar with and I'm definitely not any good at, at achieving, but April showers bring May flowers. So why don't we talk about watercolors next month? How about that? So we'll, we'll dive into watercolor scares me to death. And like I said, it's not my area, <laughs> not at all. So again, thank you. This is Miss Mariah from the Allen County Public Library. And this has been Art Education. I hope you learned something besides the fact that I can talk forever in a day. <laughs> but thank you and I'll see you guys later. Bye.